3.1 notes. In 3.1, we're going to be solving quadratic equations. So in the past, we've solved linear equations where we just had x. That would be linear. But now we're going to be solving quadratic. Quadratic equations are equations with x squared or have a variable that's squared. Typically, before when we've seen quadratics, we've had to factor them. So we're going to be involving factoring into our solving. So we're solving quadratic equations. There's three different ways that we can solve. We can solve by graphing, which we'll talk about graphing kind of towards the end, because with graphing, we're going to end up factoring them anyways. We can solve them with square roots. So anytime we have like x squared equals a number, or if you have like x plus a number squared equals another number, this is where we'd want to take the square roots. But if we have an x squared and an x and a number, this is where we have to factor. So anytime we have an x squared, an x, and a constant, in our equation, we're going to solve by factoring. We're going to skip graphing for now. We'll come back to it at the end of the notes. We're going to skip this slide and we're going to skip this one for now. We're going to be solving quadratic equations algebraically first. So this is the examples where we'll have an x squared equals a number, or we could have like parentheses squared equals a number. So we want to isolate our variable. We'll talk about it once we get more into the examples. We're going to be solving them algebraically. The second paragraph talks about rationalizing the denominator, which we did before when we had square roots. So we're going to ignore that. We're just going to be solving. So in example two, we're going to be solving using square roots. So when we are solving using square roots, we just have an x squared in our equation. So we don't have an x squared and an x. We just have an x squared. So we want to isolate our x squared and move everything else to the other side of the equation. So because I'm subtracting 31, I'm going to do the opposite and add 31 to move it to the other side. So we have 4x squared is equal to 80. Next, we're going to divide 4 on both sides. So x squared is equal to 20. Once we have our x squared all by itself, we want to do the opposite of squaring a number. The opposite of squaring it would be to take the square root. So we're going to take the square root of both sides of our equation. Anytime we take the square root of both sides, you need a plus or minus in front of the number, in front of your radical on the right side. So it cancels out with the squared. So we have x is equal to here. We need a plus or minus square root 20. So you need plus or minus when you take the square root of both sides. Last step is we always need to simplify our radical. So we did this in our pre-chapter one stuff. We need to find two factors of 20, which would be 4 and 5. So we're finding the prime factors. So we got to break it down until we have all prime numbers. Two factors of 4 would be 2 and 2. We circle groups of 2. Whatever we circle comes to the outside. So I still need that plus or minus in my answer. So we have plus or minus 2. If it doesn't get circled, it stays on the inside. So 2 square root 5. This would be our answer. x is equal to plus or minus 2 square root 5. You always need to simplify the radical. Right, 
next for b we see that we just have an x squared in our equation so we want to isolate our x squared we're going to move everything else to the other side so first thing we want to do is subtract 9 so 3x squared is equal to negative 9 Next, since 3 is being multiplied to x squared, we want to divide it on both sides to cancel it out. So x squared is equal to negative 3. Now that, our now that our x squared is all by itself, we want a square root to cancel out with the squared. So I take the square root of both sides. Anytime we take the square root of both sides, we need to put a plus or minus. So we have x is equal to plus or minus square root negative 3. We can't simplify the square root of negative 3 anymore, so that would be our answer. We're going to skip C for now. We'll come back to it. We'll practice more of these when I come back, and we'll do more after we take our test number 3, but we're going to skip it for now. Now let's look at number 4 on the next page. So first thing we want to do is get our x squared all by itself. So I'm going to subtract 14 on both sides. So we have 2 over 3x squared is equal to 6. Next, I'm multiplying by 2 over 3. So technically I'm dividing by 3 here. So the opposite of dividing by 3 would be to multiply by 3. So I'm going to do the left side in two separate steps. I'm going to multiply both sides by 3 so it cancels out with the dividing part. So I have 2x squared is equal to 6 times 3, which would be 18. Next, we're going to divide both sides by 2. So x squared is equal to 9. Now we need to get rid of the x squared, so I'm going to square root both sides so it cancels out with the squared. Anytime we take the square root of both sides, we need to put a plus or minus in our answer. So x is equal to plus or minus, and the square root of 9 is 3. So plus or minus 3. Now let's look at 5. I'm going to subtract 1 on both sides because we want to get the x squared all by itself. So we have negative 2x squared is equal to negative 7. Next, I'm going to divide both sides by negative 2. So it cancels here. So x squared is equal to a negative divided by a negative turns positive. So that would be 7 over 2. Lastly, we have to get rid of the squared. So I'm going to square root both sides to cancel out with the squared. Anytime we take the square root of both sides, you need a plus or minus. So x equals plus or minus square root 7 over 2. So that would be our answer. For number six, we need to get the squared part all by itself. So here, our parentheses is what we need to isolate first. So we're going to divide both sides by two to cancel it out. Since it's being multiplied on the left side, we divide because we need to do the opposite to cancel it. So x minus four squared is equal to negative five over two. Now before we can touch inside the parentheses here, we have to get rid of the squared. So I'm going to square root both sides to cancel it out. So x minus 4 is equal to plus or minus square root negative 5 over 2. Don't forget, anytime you take the square root of both sides, you have to include the plus or minus there. Now that last step that I have to do, I need the x all by itself. So I have to move the 4 to the other side. So since x is being subtracted by 4, I'm going to add 4 to move it over. So x is equal to, I can't combine 4 and the square root of 5 over 2. They're not like terms. So I'm just going to say 4 plus or minus the square root of negative 5 over 2. This would be our answer. So these are not like terms, so we can't combine them. So you just leave it separate. And then you always put the whole number first. Next, we're going to be solving by factoring. So it talks about the zero product property. When we factor, we usually factor into two parentheses. 
and it's going to be equal to zero. If either one of these parentheses was zero, so let's say I had zero times 100. <laughs> doesn't matter what the other number is, zero times whatever that number is would still be zero. So once we factor into our two parentheses, we set them both equal to zero to find out what our two different answers could be, which would be the solution for x. So anytime we factor, we need it to be equal to zero before we start factoring the question. So in example three, we're gonna solve by factoring. So like I just said, we need it to be equal to zero before we start factoring. So I'm gonna subtract 45 to move it to the other side. So I have x squared minus 4x minus 45 is equal to zero. Once we get it equal to zero, we're going to factor. So what are two factors of negative 45 that add to negative 4? That would be negative 9 and positive 5. So just like factoring, we write it into our parentheses. So I have x minus 9 and x plus 5 equals zero. And then we want to set both of our parentheses here equal to zero and set them up as two separate equations. So I have x minus 9 equals zero and x plus 5 equals zero. So I'm going to solve both of them separately. There's like two separate little equations here. So I'm going to add 9 to both sides. So x is equal to positive 9. And then in the second equation, since x is being added 5 is being added to x. I'm going to subtract 5. We do the opposite to move it to the other side. So x is equal to negative 5. So these are my two solutions to my question here. And just like before when we were solving linear equations, you can always take your answers and plug them into the x's to check and see if it makes sense if your answers work out. So we have two answers. Let's look at the next one. Anytime the question says find the zeros, zeros is the same thing as solving. Just sometimes here, it'll say f of x or it would say y, but when we find the zeros, it's just like saying that that's zero. So we have zero is equal to 2x squared minus 11x plus 12. Now when we factor, when our leading coefficient is not one, we have to multiply the first times the last. So 2 times 12 would be 24. Now we're looking for two factors of 24 that add to negative 11. So this would be negative 8 and negative 3. So this factors into x minus 8 times x minus 3. Now we can't forget, since we started by multiplying 2, we have to divide both of our numbers by that 2. So anytime you multiply the first times the last, you have to go back in and divide. So here we have x minus 4. If it doesn't divide, move the x and move the number, the denominator in front of the x. This would be 2x minus 3. Now the last step. After we factor, is we set both of our parentheses equal to zero, and we solve our two mini equations. So we have x minus 4 equals zero, and 2x minus 3 equals zero. We're going to add 4 to both sides, so x is equal to 4. Here I need to add 3 to both sides, so 2x is equal to 3. We need to get x all by itself, so the last step is I have to divide by 2. So x is equal to 3 over 2. So those would be our two solutions. Let's look at 7 on the next page. We are solving by factor. So here, it's already equal to 0. So we're good, we can just go ahead and factor. What are two factors of 35 that add to 12? 5 and 7. 
So this factors into x plus 5 and x plus 7. Now I didn't have to start by multiplying here, so I don't have to divide. So I can just set each of my parentheses equal to 0. So x plus 5 equals 0 and x plus 7 equals 0. Subtract 5 on both sides to solve our first little equation. So x is equal to negative 5. The second one, I'm going to subtract 7 on both sides. So x is equal to negative 7. And those would be our two answers. For number 8, anytime we solve by factoring, it has to be equal to 0 first. So I need to subtract 2 to move it to the other side. So I have 3x squared minus 5x minus 2 is equal to 0. Now we start with a leading coefficient that is not 1, so I have to multiply the first times the last. So we get negative 6. What are two factors of negative 6 that add to negative 5? That would be negative 6 and 1. So this factors into x minus 6 times x plus 1. Since we started with multiplying here, we have to remember to go back in and divide. Simplify the fraction if you can. So we have x minus 2. If you can't, move the denominator in front of the x. So 3x plus 1. Now here we're not just factoring. We have to solve it all the way. So we set each of our parentheses equal to 0. x minus 2 equals 0. And 3x plus 1 equals 0. We solve each of our two little equations. So we're going to add 2 on both sides. So x is equal to 2. For my other equation, I'm going to subtract 1. 3x is equal to negative 1, then divide by 3. So x is equal to negative 1 over 3. So these would be my two answers. On the next page for number 9, find the zeros. Again, we just changed the f of x to be 0, and we solved the same way. So here I have an x squared and an x, so I know that I have to solve by factor. When we factor here, we don't have three terms. It's not a trinomial, so I can't find factors of the last that add to the middle. But I do have a GCF here, so I'm going to take out my GCF, which is x. So I divide both of these by x, and we're left with x minus 8. Now this is as factored as we can go. So I'm going to set both of the pieces here. I don't have two sets of parentheses, but I do have that x, so I'm going to set both parts equal to 0. So my first part is x is equal to 0. We don't even have to solve that. That is one of the solutions to our question. The second part, we have x minus 8 equals 0. So I'm going to add 8 to both sides. So x is equal to positive 8. So these are my two solutions here. So anytime you take out a GCF of x, put it on the outside, and that's still a piece of the factors. So you still have to set it equal to 0. So you can't forget about the x that you take out. still have to set it equal to 0 because that is one of your solutions. We're going to do the same thing with number 10. We're going to pretend that this is 0 here. So we're just solving the same way we would. We're going to solve by factoring. In this question, you can multiply the first times the last. But what do you notice about 4x squared and 49? They're both perfect squares. So 4x squared factors into 2x times 2x, and 49 factors into 7 and 7. So here, we have 0 is equal to, this would factor into 2x plus 7 squared. Now, technically, we have two of these, so it would be 
2x plus 7 times 2x plus 7. But because they're the same thing, when we set them equal to 0, it's going to give us the same number. So I'm going to say 2x plus 7 is equal to 0. Again, if you wanted to, you can say the same thing with the second one, 2x plus 7 equals 0. But they're the same little equation, so they're going to give you the same answer. So here I'm going to subtract 7 on both sides. So 2x is equal to negative 7. Divide by 2. So x is equal to negative 7 over 2. This one, it's the same equation, so it's going to give you the same answer. x is equal to negative 7 over 2. If it gives you two of the same answers, you don't have to list it twice. Only once is fine. Next, we're going to go back to the question with graphing. So when we solve with graphing, we're going to get more into the graphing parts later. It, we're gonna, it's in chapter 2. We're going to go back to chapter 2, but we're going to graph after we solve. We're just going to solve this by factoring, so you won't have any questions where you have to graph without factoring. So here we want to find two factors of negative 6 that add to negative 1. So our two factors would be negative 3 and 2. So this factors into x minus 3 and x plus 2. Now we set each piece equal to 0. So x minus 3 equals 0, x plus 2 equals 0, and we solve both of our many equations. So here I'm going to add 3 to both sides, so x is equal to 3. Here I'm going to subtract 2 on both sides, so x is equal to negative 2. So I'm going to put those two points, these are my zeros, or my solutions here. I'm going to put these two points on my graph. Since it's x equals, they're going to go on my x-axis. So I have a point at 3 and a point at negative 2. Now, again, we're going to get more into it, but x-squared graphs are parabolas. If we have a positive x-squared, it's a happy face parabola. If it was a negative x-squared, then it would be a sad face parabola, a parabola that opens down. So since this is a positive x squared, our parabola opens up, so it'd look like this. But again, we're not going to be solving by graphing here. We're going to focus more on solving by either factoring or solving algebra. Because here we had to factor first to find our solution. So we're going to be factoring mostly. Factoring or algebraically, where we take the square root of both sides. So don't worry about graphing for now, but that's how we would do a question with graphing. We'd factor first. Don't forget to turn in the notes by the end of class. The 3.1 homework is going to be due next week because we're going to focus on the test this week, so 3.1 homework is due next week. Do We don't have school Monday next week, so it's due Tuesday next week. But don't forget that our test is Thursday, and it's on sections R9, R10, 1.3, and 1.4. So what we did today, this 3.1 notes will not be on the test. We're going to talk about it a little bit more tomorrow and then focus on what's going to be on the test. This week. So don't forget to turn in the notes. Also, when you're done turning in the notes, you can work on the test review. Because that is due on Wednesday. So I work on the test review.